how you do it. So the first one is, while you're going, while you're involved in life, you make disciples. That's your job. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the second part of it. So how do you do it? Baptism. Immersion. That Greek word is immersion. It is plunging. It is being dipped in. It's no other word. Rantizo or Kreizo are the other two words. It's not those words. Baptizo. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, the great omission of the great commission. Pray Jesus into your heart. Let's get another follower. Let's baptize somebody and get them wet. But you know what the real effort is in discipleship? Teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What are we supposed to be doing as Christian followers of Jesus Christ? Make more disciples. Make better disciples. Period. For the Sermon in the Cup, Jesus changed history. Jesus changed everyone's life. But first of all, the sacrifice of his body. But second of all, giving his church a mission to tell this story over and over and over and over again. He said that night, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we give you thanks. We praise you for that sacrifice. And in the cup, a blood oath, a promise, a guarantee by God for eternity, not only he can break it, he's got to die in order to break it. That's not going to happen. Jesus said, take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, two of the greatest evangelists I've ever met in my life, I've had in my congregation, um, and neither one of them was a preacher. Neither one of them uh, went to Angel Factory, that's called Christian College or Seminary or anything like that. <laughs> Angel Factory. They don't produce angels, by the way. <clears throat> But they were some of the greatest evangelists. One of them has gone on to be with the Lord. His name is Danny Hudson. Great guy. He had like a second, third grade education. He, couldn't, he was functionally illiterate. Uh, when he was baptized on Easter Sunday morning, um, his life totally transformed. And then that guy went out. He would haul people out of homeless communities in central Florida, bring them to church, and he would share the gospel of Jesus with them to his dying day. One of the greatest evangelists I've ever met. The other one is Cease. Never, never have I met someone who works with the diligence of Cease. I, I still think the thousand things around here that you take and you don't see done, um, and there are people who have stepped forward, I'm not saying that, that you don't see done and the moment you don't see them done, you realize Cease was doing it. And then someone steps forward to fill the gap. But her passion is evangelism. Just before she went into unconsciousness, she asked me to be in contact with her grandson, who is no longer considers himself a Christian. Nice young man. I probably spent forever on the phone with him Monday night. She, the story there was she never gave up on him. There's some challenges with some family members and they've been estranged. And isn't it interesting, the family members have estranged ceased, but they've also estranged the grandson for opposite reasons. One that they communicated, basically it was 
they continued to communicate together. He would confide in her and she would listen because she never, ever, ever gave up on him. And she knows things are slipping away. She wanted Bart to be taken care of, but she wanted her grandson to be talked to. So right now he's one of my missions. Mm -hmm. This is Christmas. I want you to pick out a mission. Just one. And surely there are missions in your life right now. If God can talk about saving you for thousands of years and be excited about it, you can do the same thing and talk about his son for 70 odd years or until the Lord takes you home. Correct? Stand and be dismissed. Father, we have such a great cloud of witnesses. I am awed by the people who have preceded me. I'm awed by their legacy, by their love. But I'm awed by you too, God. I pray as if we leave these doors this day, that we leave on a mission. Let us not get caught up in all the worthless, futile things of man. Father, may we be intent on eternity and you getting what you want and that is your children back. So send us. May we be what you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Be dismissed. Have a great day. Okay.